Hi, this is Steve at HeavenlySign2017.com. Before I begin, I want to address a question that I've been asked about the books of life. That's books plural, the book of life and the Lamb's book of life. Different words for book and life are used in Revelation 17, 8, Revelation 21, 27, and Psalm 69, 28. The original Hebrew text describes a picture wherein the names of everyone born physically into this world are written into the book of life, literally the book of the living. The names of those who are redeemed remain in the book of the living and are added to the Lamb's book of life. Psalm 69 28 states those who are not redeemed are not only absent from the Lamb's Book of Life, they are blotted out of this book, abolished, wiped out, remembered no more, because they were never written into the Lamb's Book of Life. It's as if they never existed in the first place. As Hebrews 10.31 states, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But as believers, we can be assured we will never come into judgment because our names have been written into the Lamb's Book of Life. And I want you to take note of the fact that nowhere in Scripture is it ever said that any name is ever blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. The names of those who are redeemed remain in the safer of Kai and are added to the Biblion of Zoe. Now I want to talk more about Jupiter, the cosmic vacuum cleaner, because it protects Earth from the impacts of celestial objects or as the ancients called it, the cosmic liver. If it wasn't for Jupiter, we'd probably wind up with something like this. But Jupiter takes the affliction for us instead. Uh, most of you will get what I really mean by that. So let's go back a few years to a spectacular event that occurred in our solar system that has profound prophetic significance. July 18, 1994 is the day the largest fragment impact of Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 occurred and it just happened to be Tisha B'Av on the Hebrew calendar. Important to note is that Tisha B'Av brings remembrance to the 12 spies recorded in the book of Numbers. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this event, it goes something like this. After a year at Mount Sinai, the Jewish people pack up their portable sanctuary and come to the borders of the land of Israel. They should have entered the land at this point, but the Jewish people came to Moses and said, uh, now wait a minute, let's scout out the land first before we enter. So they select 12 scouts or spies, one from each of the 12 tribes, and they send them in to do some reconnaissance work. But it didn't exactly go as planned. The tragedy of the spies is going to reverberate throughout all of Jewish history. It's going to put into place one of the most significant and certainly most depressing dates in the Jewish calendar, the 9th of Av, Tisha B'Av. Virtually every major disaster in Jewish history is going to be connected with the 9th of Av, which is the exact date when both the first and second temples were destroyed. So what was the terrible mistake of the spies? Well, these 12 spies spend 40 days scouting out the land and they come back with a huge cluster of grapes saying, uh, you all see the size of these grapes? Well, you ought to see the size of some of the people who eat them. Uh, they were referring to giants. 
No way can we beat them. We may as well go back to Egypt. Only two of the spies give a positive report, Joshua and Caleb, but the Jewish people accept the majority report of the spies. The people break down in tears at the news and they refuse to budge. Moses is absolutely horrified and God is very angry and issues two decrees of punishment. God tells the Jews that because they displayed this lack of faith after he had brought them so far, they are doomed to wander in the desert for 40 years. One year for every day they spied out the land. Those of you who think we're crazy for often doing calculations that convert days to years or vice versa ought to stop and think about that. One year for every day they spent spying out the land until the entire adult male population, except for the Levites who didn't listen to the spies, had died off. God tells the Jews that because they cried on this day for no good reason, they'll cry on this day in history for some very good reasons. So the Jews wandered for 40 years. But those who had the greatest weaknesses also had the greatest strength. Stop and think about that for a moment. What's their greatest strength? Their complete dedication to an ideology which enabled them to exist for thousands of years as the only monotheists in the world, outlast the greatest nations in history, and die for a belief that would change the world. What's their greatest weakness? This national characteristic of idealism and independence is a double-edged sword that has a negative side to it. Their complete, stubborn dedication to an idea that makes every Jew think he's right and every Jew think he's going to change the world his way. Stop and let that sink in for a second or two as well. This is a group that is very, very difficult to unify and almost impossible to lead, kind of like uh, our own Protestant denominational religious system. There is a funny story illustrating this point about a meeting between former U.S. President Harry Truman and the future Prime Minister of Israel, Golda Meir. Truman was bemoaning the difficulties of leadership and, and told Meir, you have no idea what it is to be a president of a country of 200 million people. To which Meir said, well, you have no idea of what it is to be a prime minister of a country of two million prime ministers. Anyway, to get back on track, did you know that World War I broke out on the 9th of Av? Yep, that's right. The Germans sweep into Eastern Europe, they uproot Jewish communities, and they demolish centuries of tradition. It was the precursor to the Holocaust. Anyway, back to the 12 spies. Joshua and Caleb have confidence concerning Israel's ability to conquer its enemies and enter the promised land. The 10 got the plague and died for their own belief, but Joshua and Caleb believed God and are allowed to enter the promised land after God caused a generation to die off, wandering in the wilderness for 40 years before entering. Which brings me to the purpose of this video. Mark the date. I've explored this subject before in a previous video. July 18, 1994, Comet Shoemaker Levy 9. On this date, the largest collision of the fragments hits Jupiter, leaves a black spot 12,000 kilometers across. That's almost twice the Earth's radius. Now go forward 23 years to the day, and voila, we're at the Temple Mount where it, it has exploded in chaotic protest over who should have a right to enter into the Promised Land. And the following day, Rabbi Jeremy Gimple is arrested for praying on the Temple Mount, July 19, 2017. 23 years and a day, from when the largest fragment of SL9 collided with Jupiter and this on a Tisha B'Av. 
and the scientific community just goes whoa this is cool never seen anything like that before not having a clue as to what it's really all about even though they do have the biggest pair of binoculars in the sky let's see now could God be drawing his people both Israel and the church to a couple of things here like maybe Jupiter and massive destruction it's hard not to see it that way historic events unfold on the Temple Mount exactly 23 years after Shoemaker Levy 9 impacts on a Tishbiav reminding Israel of the 12 spies of whom 10 did not believe God whereby a generation was allowed to die off wandering in the wilderness so I looked deeper into this because only two of the 12 spies believed I was suddenly struck with the reminder of two witnesses who will appear announcing the return of the Messiah and the coming kingdom where Israel is finally allowed to forever possess the land God promised so the recent historical Temple Mount events which are ongoing just happened to be 23 years forward from the largest impact of 21 fragments to collide with Jupiter on a Tishbiav, with the shooting on the Temple Mount occurring 70 days before 5778 and if we count 30 years forward instead of 23 we come to 2024 the year Jesus returns on our timeline so this got me to swing the pickaxe looking for facts the impacts occurred over a period of seven days seven days from July 16 to July 22 don't overlook the significance of the seven days nothing in the universe is random this largest of all impacts has a few sixes associated with it reminding me of the 6,000 year history of mankind before the thousand year millennium of Sabbath rest and wouldn't you know it SL9 is so rare that they say objects nearly a mile in diameter impact Jupiter only once in about 6,000 years taking note of the year again SL9 impacted Jupiter in 1994 four digits that just happened to have a sum of 23 they gave the fragments letter identities there were actually 23 in all which ended in W there was no X Y or Z 21 fragments were observed and photographed in a famous photo which has become known as the string of pearls plural Jesus's parable of the singular pearl of great price speaks of the millennium age in scripture when we see the phrase kingdom of the heavens as it is literally translated we can be assured that it refers to this kingdom age period by noting the context the numbers 21 23 as well as 9 jump off the page and scream wake up in our faces here the Strong's number for the year of SL9 1994 just happens to be the word to return or to convert repent and of course the Jewish gematria value of Shoemaker Levy 9 has to be 1404 four digits that just happen to equal nine as do the words they will repent in the original Hebrew text this is from the word metanoeo metanoeo meaning repent and imagine the impact pun intended it had on me when I discovered that the word overthrown as in overthrown in the wilderness has a gematria value of the very year that this event occurred and this on Tishabiyav you can't make this stuff up the largest impact to the upcoming solar eclipse in August 2017 is 84 36 days inclusive four digits which have a sum of 21 which happens to be oh my what do you know 23 years 
from the largest impact to the Hebrew year 5778, September 21, 2017, is 8467 days inclusive. 84 times 67 is 5628, four digits, which equal 21. But wouldn't you know it, Jupiter was impacted again, this time by an asteroid July 19, 2009, exactly 15 years to the day after the SL9 impacts. This created a new black spot about the size of the Pacific Ocean I was in the Navy, so I know how big that ocean is. I say that so you don't slip into the coma of just thinking how small that impact was from our perspective here on Earth. That was huge. So exactly 15 years later, after the impacts of SL9 occur, an asteroid impact occurs. That is eight years exact before this recent Temple Mount crisis would occur, which turns out to be, oh my goodness, 23 years since the impacts of SL9 in 1994. Everybody that knows anything about the Revelation 12 signs walking around with the number 23 in their head. So just what does all this mean? Well, what I am sure of is that if my name was Avishalom or Rabinovich or something like that, my hair might just possibly be standing on end knowing that we are fastly approaching the end of days. Because when I see such rare and phenomenal celestial events taking place in the heavens above my head as all this occurs in my lifetime, including all the numbers associated with and aligning itself with Jupiter, a comet, and an asteroid, a solar eclipse, Tishbiav, Israel entering or not entering the promised land and perishing in the wilderness because of their unbelief, as well as what is now occurring on the Temple Mount as it regards a nation in need of turning back to God and all of this a few days before the fulfillment of the Revelation 12 sign in the heavens, I can't feel anything other than a heart for his people, Israel in spite of the joy of knowing that Jesus will soon be coming for his beloved bride. This is Steve. I love you guys. I truly do. Keep looking up. And thanks for watching.